all right, to, in order to understand better how um, this computational approach to looking at bonding works, well, let's critically look at how hybridization is treating our orbitals. So when we talk about an sp3 hybrid, this is just a one sp3 hybrid on methane, and we know we have four sp3 hybrids. This is this is a, an atomic orbital. It's a hybrid atomic orbital, and we say that this is uh, this atomic orbital has 25% s character and 75% p character. Well, we can be a little bit more precise than that. It's um, it's really 25% s character plus not just 75% p, but that 75% p comes from three different p orbitals. We could say there's 25% from px, 25% from py, and 25% pz. And if we don't really care if we're talking about px, y, or pz, we can just kind of lump them together and say, okay, that's 0.75p. But strictly speaking, we're saying it, we're taking a mixture of all these orbitals. So th this is what our sp3 hybrid more accurately looks like. Now we need to make sure that all the all the orbitals that we put in, remember we started from s, px, py, pz. That's four atomic orbitals. And then we made four sp3 hybrids. We need to make sure that all four of our starting atomic orbitals are represented in our hybrids. Well, they are, because if we multiply this by four, we would get out with the one S, one PX, one PY, and one PZ. Okay, perfect. So we can account for everything that we put in to make these hybrids. And that's part of, you know, so there's a little bit of mathematical rigor, rigor that actually goes into uh, hybridization. So it turns out when we do computational methods to um, construct molecules from the original atomic orbitals and again this we're not going to make hybrids we're just going to use for carbon s p x p y and p z that we're going to kind of use the same thoughts as hybridization except we're not going to be restricted to you you having equal representation of all of our orbitals we're going to be able to mix and match as we want but there's one thing that we need to make sure that we do. We need to make sure that once we're done with our bonding picture, our new bonding picture uses up all of our S orbital and all of our PX and all of our PY and all of our PZ. Now we could do this with hybrids simply by saying, oh yeah, well, uh, uh, so it's kind of top middle of the screen. We have four hybrids. Let's just multiply this by four and make sure all the coefficients end up being one. We're going to have exactly that same mathematical mentality when we look at this more complex um, bonding picture. But each of our bonding orbitals or antibonding orbitals can be constructed by different fractions. So let's say one orbital might be 0.4s. We may have almost no representation of px, but we may have high representation of py. So we just make need to make sure our, our coefficients work properly. Now there's another weird thing that we're going to see when we do this uh, these computational models. As it turns out, we're going to see coefficients that can be negative. So we could have a negative contribution from PY, which simply, be, because these orbitals are really mathematical constructs, we can do addition and subtraction with them. And that that is, I think, maybe the most puzzling thing because I want to treat these as hard objects and how do you think of the a negative of a hard object you, you can't but the fact is orbitals are mathematical constructs so we'll talk about this but just be ready we're going to see negative values for the coefficients on our orbitals in hybridization we only see positives and I love positives. But the fact is, since we're dealing with math, we can do addition and subtraction. So we can also see negatives. And we'll, we'll talk about how to best handle that when we actually see some real data.